crucial, well, two crucial events. Beer and Brewery of the Year. I'm Rafko of Rafko and Disco Beer Review, and this is the Rafko and Disco Beer Show. Hey, welcome. Happy New Year. How you doing? You're right out there. Is anyone watching? I usually get a few followers at this point, but hey, no one is. Oh, someone is. That's nice. Well, hey, Phil. Hail. Hail. Dance, 90s dance raving Phil. Good to see from you. As I was saying, it is Beer and Brewery of the Year night. And this is going to be one to remember. I'm not giving any spoilers just yet because, you know, I've got a show to do and I'm just waiting for Disco, who I sent a message saying we're on in one minute and he's not here yet. But Phil's here. I'm here. Hey, Phil's here. Hey, have you got a beer of the year, Phil? You want to share with me? You want to talk about now? Go ahead. I just had to turn the TV over because um, Mrs. Brown's Boys is on. And no way, no how, uh -uh, not happening. Oh, Disco has joined. Disco has joined. He shall now receive an invite. Waiting for Disco. Do, 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 do. Waiting for Disco. Do, 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 do. Here you are. Da, 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 da. Happy New Year, Rasko. Happy New Year or Merry New Year. Indeed, very festive times. Indeed, um, yes. Uh, hello, Phil. Uh, Phil has said, mine has fallen aching after a wave, after a wave, oh, there you go. And more than 9782. Hello, how are you doing? All right, let's get the crap started. Um, where is my glass? How the devil are you, sir? I'm, I'm good. I'm just wondering where my glass is. Hey, Not lots of different keep you keep talking and um, why I get my glass because I didn't pick it up in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh, tonight, as the uh, description says, is uh, Rasko and Disco Beer Review Beer of the Year. But uh, one of my own special one, which I'll come to shortly. Uh, and one each for me and Rasko because we're never, ever going to agree on a beer of the year together. Or it could happen. Could happen, but... It's very, very unlikely because we mostly di drink different things. We don't always get hold of the same beers. Uh, we don't even judge it the same way. I don't think we even look at it the same way, do we, Rasko, would you say? No, we, we don't even like each other. So um, yeah, it's just no, no chance. That, um, yeah. <laughs> that's, almost, that's almost fair. That's almost fair. No, we just, we just look at beer a little bit differently. Sometimes the same. Sometimes we agree on beers, don't we? So, yeah, uh, What are you drinking tonight? What are you drinking for the show tonight? Let's go. So I uh, got one of my nominees, uh, Catherine, um, mm -hmm. 12 Pivot from Albert. It is from Albert. It's vegan friendly. I uh, had this a few months ago in relation to the Pivo show um, when we interviewed the guys from Pivo. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I've um, got this. I also found another of my nominations. I walked straight past it. It's my... It was in the fridge, as you've nominated, and I had a voice in my head going, you've nominated that for Beer of the Year. So, and I was going, yes, I have. <laughs> you've nominated that for Beer of the Year. Yes, I have. And I just walked straight past it, just not even thinking, you know, try it again. Because this, yeah. that was um, pressure drop, I'll cry if I, it's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah, I kind of missed out on that. Hello, hello, uh, Sturgeon. How are you doing? Not, not <laughs> again. <laughs> The beard, come if you heard, the beard is kind of getting back slowly uh, after the shave in November. Um, October it was. Uh, yeah, so that's, that, Albrecht is on your brewery of the year, isn't it? It is, so, oh, okay. look at it, it's smoking, it's smoking, it's smoking. Ooh, lovely. Mm. Well, I too am be drinking some of my nominations tonight. Um, what I was thinking of doing, I might just get into it straight away. Let's do the first one straight away. Let's do Disco's Disco Beer of the Year first. Is that all right? Yes. Yes. Go for it, mate. This is a daft little one that I do based on the Disco collection. Uh, I have this strange preoccupation with finding beers with Disco in the name. I haven't had too many this year, um, but uh, I've had some fairly good ones. Uh, and the nominations are, uh, first of all, this pair of dippers, double IPAs from 
first of all, from Whiplash Disco Myst Mystic and Full Circle, so Clouds. They're in there because it was a bit of a surprise. Wouldn't expect to put a double IPA in because I'm not necessarily a fan of them. But they were nicely pineapple, nicely tropical, nicely smooth. Uh, and slightly making up the numbers is Polly's uh, Disco Infiltrate. It's a West Coast IPA. Again, it's an IPA. Wouldn't necessarily expect me to like them that much. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting the West Coast, and that was quite a decent beer. Uh, but the winner for me is this one. I'm going to do it live on the show, and hopefully it doesn't go everywhere. One second. I keep talking. This is the utter beauty of utter madness from Neon Raptor. Or vampire disco. Yeah. Uh, look at the colours on that. It is a peanut butter jelly sour with mm. cherry, strawberry, black currant, and red currant. Uh, and this hit me from the off the last time I had it, so hopefully I'll get that same oh wow moment, which is the reason of uh, giving it the mod disco beer of the year. Wow. Oh, there it is. Oh, my day. Honestly, um, I have a love-hate relationship with blackcurrant. That's like a big blackcurrant sorbet. Yeah. Um, massive, massive hit of sour. And you might say, Raspo, what am I doing nominating, even nominating a sour? Um, but this has got all that kind of sweetness going on. It's got the sweetness of the... Uh, peanut butter the sweetness of the jelly the peanut butter comes really the peanut butter is great in the aroma it's a 10 percent, but you can't really there's no sort of boozy spirity barrel agedness that you get off a of 10 percent. Mm. it's like oh it's like a, a punch made out of a can of vimto and a bottle of ribena uh, with a spoonful of peanut butter it's really nice it would have it would have made an interesting addition to my beer of the year i didn't put it in there if only for the fact that again the way i choose beers is um it's just one of those one-off beers although i did go back for a second this is of the, the second one went back to trembling madness in york and luckily got another one um just probably because i thought that it would be on the show today um oh, absolutely super fruity juiciness um you can just about the cherry kind of comes across later as well and then I'm thinking, I know there's strawberry there somewhere. Eventually find it. There's just absolute madness. Now, I don't, I know you've had quite a lot of uh, Omnipolo stuff and they do some madness. I haven't had so much Omnipolo, but I think that would challenge your Omnipolo's recipe. Well, I'm, I, I was having this conversation last night. It's the same conversation I've had with a few people. It's Omnipolo are either hit or miss. There is no mm. middle ground with them. Um, they, they're either doing something absolutely groundbreaking or they're doing something which you've not really interested in. It's a very bizarre one. Um, so, yeah, that's seemed true. Well, you, it's great descriptions, great notes you got there, mate. Honestly, I've really got a lot out of that just by um, hearing you talk. Um, so that's your Christmas present. Finish it. <laughs> Almost, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just one of those that, that, and again, like I say, we have different sort of categories or reasons that we choose. I do choose yeah. beers on kind of the wow factor, something yes. that intrigues me, something that I enjoy, obviously, something yes. I want to go back to. Uh, and with yes. that one, you can go back to a bit more because you can find more in it, I think. Um, yes. Mad colours, mad colours. It nearly destroyed my. Um, I poured it, the first one I had, I poured it when I did it on the review on Disco Day, I, I poured it a mm -hmm. bit too lively myself and it nearly destroyed my Titanic bar runner, but luckily that's white paint. <laughs> it is bright, bright, red and purpley. Bit of a tinge of blue maybe. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, Neon Raptor have been coming some good stuff this year and I haven't had quite enough. I've only ever had one other blue the Neon Raptor. Um, but it's one one to look out for for next year uh, I missed a few comments uh, Meet Beer Boss has joined good to see you ah oh, the boss great hello uh, that's better I've got the right shades on now good yeah uh, thanks for everybody who's just joined let us know what you're drinking and your beers of the years we'll try and get to the comments as they roll up on our screen 
Yes. Well, that's my first. That's my first one. Disco's Disco Build Year. Neon Raptors. Uh, disco Vampire Disco. Yeah. Uh, over to you. How's your Albrecht going? Uh, first it's of all, what was it? Sorry, what, what was the beer? It was Catherine. Um, mm -hmm. There is a story behind the picture. It is appears to be some kind of a noble. Or, um, I don't know the story. I was told the story, but I was drunk and forgot. Um, <laughs> I have to look that up. Um, it's a great dark lager. Um, at the beginning, their head was kind of tinted. Um, if any, well, if Radim saw, saw me pour this, he would have been kicking my ass because um, it would poured it very badly. Mm. It's very fresh. It's very um, in aroma and taste. It's not like a dark lager. You would expect it to be a bit more, well, dark, maltier. Um, and it's not. Um, mm. Elton John is back. Well. Uh, hey, yes, Elton John is back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, look out for dark lagers later in the show. I'm sure you know what's coming up there, Rasko. But um, um, kind of, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, yeah, I mean, dark lagers uh, have had uh, maybe a bit of a resurgence this year. I've seen quite a lot more dark lagers this year, and yeah. um, that's you know it, it kind of sits better with certainly me and definitely us. You like that dark and maltier flavour, but with the lightness of a lager. Uh, it does look pretty good in the glass there. Yeah, it is good. Um, I'm kind of getting through it. I'm not pouring it properly, which is a shame, so I'm not getting the full flavour of it. But it's delicious. It is absolutely fucking gorgeous. Um, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, even though I have messed up before. Um, mm. it, it is... I, I think you got, you're got onto something there about dark lager is kind of a resurging. Um, I think there is a kind of need for lager to try and reinvent itself in some ways, um, but not reinvent itself, if you get what I mean. Like, show what else there, there is to lager, and it can be dark, and it can be <laughs> not super juice. <laughs> Rasko to Jaffa glasses. It's all good, man. Yeah. The way um, see the way the way Phil sees the world sometimes, I think, is brilliant. I, I I wholeheartedly agree with that comment. I can see exactly where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this this came up. I did a live stream um, with on Crumbly Beard Show on YouTube, and we got asked yeah. what your favourite biscuits. And I said Jaffa cakes, and a lot of people said, "Oh, it matches the colour of your glasses." And oh, it's true. Yeah. Uh, yes, no, I, yeah, I, I went back and saw that after the event because I was mm. busy elsewhere on the internet on uh, on on the night and I, I came back i watched that over breakfast the following morning it was quite uh, quite amusing uh stream yeah. that yeah um but phil if stop me if i'm correct are you in a picture with bez is your profile picture of you and bez from um the happy, happy mondays, mondays? yeah <laughs> is that you and bez standing together uh -huh. Rumour is you're a bit of a nineties raver, so you know. Wouldn't surprise me. Sort of yeah. sort of thing Phil will get up to, I'd think. Yeah. Anyway. Um this is delicious. Um it's good. I'm gonna be honest, it isn't gonna make beer of the year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's off the list. Fantastic drink. I will happily drink again and again. Okay, but yeah. it does kind of support. It does kind of support your nomination to Albrecht for for brewery of the year, I guess. Yes, it does. Albrecht, um, a Czech brewery, kind of crafty, but kind of not. So they're kind mm. of like venturing in two different directions, which is good. I think it's a good thing, a very ambitious thing. It can be costly to do that. I mean, when you misinterpret your brand or misinterpret your brew recipes because you're kind of going down two avenues at the same time. So, good luck. Um, but what do I know? I'm a businessman. Yeah, no, I think Albrecht are fairly uh, solid and established Czech brewery. We had, we had a couple of good beers off of them when we got that box. When we chatted to Pivo, I got a couple of other Albrecht beers in there. Yeah. Uh, they're yeah. stout. Again, you wouldn't yeah. normally expect that off of Czech breweries, but and, excellent stout. Oh, one. yes. Yes. Uh, Phil is confirming, <laughs> yeah, yes, mate. A couple of times at festivals. Mm. <laughs> that was last year superb <laughs> and, great um how was it how is he is he as mad as he appears to be bez i suspect he is anyway yeah. 
if you show me these things, or what? I don't know how that works. Mm. Um, yes. So. Um, Oh, by the way, whilst we're, talking about, whilst, we're, whilst we're talking about Phil, can I just say congratulations to Phil Post, a thousand subscribers are here on Instagram uh, this week. Yeah. So big up your numbers. You're kidding me. Really? Oh, oh well mm -hmm. done, Phil. What's your bloody secret? Because I can oh, a thousand and you do it. You do well, it like that. Well, well, listen, done, we haven't done too well, badly. Done. We passed at some point over Christmas and New Year, we've just passed 700. So... Uh, yeah. Phil has overtaken that. It's not a race, and big up to yes, Phil for is. that. Uh, just probably down to personality, I guess. <laughs> or lack of. <laughs> mm. You speak yeah. yourself. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. I don't think we, we've got to, I've got to do a few more. Like, uh, I've, I've, I've slacked off a little bit over Christmas. I didn't do enough, like, I didn't post up enough beer reviews over Christmas. I failed in the... Uh, I failed in my um, advent calendar beers. I got stuck with 17 and 18. I didn't put them up in the end. And then I just sort of ran out of time and patience with it. So I'm slacking, Rasco. And uh, if I had a New Year's resolution, I don't do them because I always break them. But try and do a bit better with the beer reviews. Uh, try and do a bit better with the YouTube. I've got a few videos I've got in mind to do. But, you know, I don't do New Year's resolutions. That's what, probably what it would be. Have you got any New Year's resolutions, Rasco, in, in beer terms? Well, uh, not really. Um, but I will say, you don't get any vintage ale now because you didn't complete that challenge I sent you. No vintage ales for you. Well, to be fair, I wasn't anyway. You weren't going to buy me a £40 bottle of Fuller's Vintage Ale for completing that, no, were you? <laughs> no, I, I was going to give you some of the bottle I had. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, what I did remember, I didn't think to say at the time, but I have got a vintage ale in... The beer stash, although it's not the Fuller's one, it's the Bateman's equivalent. So it might be an interesting put that up against. Uh, I don't know what year it is. I think it's probably 2019. So it's yeah. you know, two years or now. But yeah, it's it's a sort of a kind of equivalence. But yeah, maybe I'll get my own. Maybe I'll get my own uh, Fuller's. Yeah. Maybe see how we go. Mine's mine's 2015. So, John, yeah. uh, Lords Burn, Happy New Year to Lords. Good to see oh, you, sir. Welcome along. Hi. hi, John. How are you doing? Any reason you're here? <laughs> well, I did put out a couple of posts this evening uh, holding up my nominations. Mm. We shall see you a little bit later on. It will be up to view after the event. Phil says, cheers to the thousand followers. Shall I? Have you already read this? Oh, mate. No, no. I think I'm mates with Bez and hence the followers. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, Lord says, yo, Rasco and Disco, happy new year to you both. Thank you. And Phil says, uh, hello, John, happy new year. Everyone's getting along with each other. Okay. Um, so um, last night I went out, first time in nine years, I went to a bar um, for New Year's. And I just went by the art and craft to try and support them. Uh, I thought they were going to be empty. They weren't. Um, so, yeah, I went to a... A slightly small crowded bar in the middle of a pandemic um, to try and support them and they did everything they could to throw a spanner in the works of beer of the year um, <laughs> actually because you were there giving you beers yeah literally they gave me discount and everything they said yeah try this try that and I, ha I did nominate something in the end of the day I did have something um, uh, some black iris santa's uh freak out or something like that and it's a great yeah. roast or uh, roasty multi stout at six percent fantastic um i had a chocolate beer by uh tribs or someone and it was good it just wasn't going to make and the wax can at the bottom of it i'll put a picture of it up online it wasn't going to make very year, but it was delicious but they then broke out a bottle that they were keeping in their little stash to celebrate, and they let me have some of mm. Omnipolo. Um, I, the name eluded me, but it was a barrel aged beer and it was sw very sweet, but the taste was kind of elusive. It, I gave it a nomination, but it won't win. Mm. It won't That's tough, isn't it? But yeah, you put a nomination in, no, because it generally deserves. A thing whether it will win or not is another matter depending on what else you got in the got in the thing yeah. um 
Uh, Phil says, John, uh, you and the team deserve uh, it, the nomination. Uh, some cracking beers last year. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that's why I put John in with... Uh, well, we'll come to that. We'll come to that, why, why I put all the, yes. the nominations I did. Um, so you're going to run through your beer of the year then, Rasko? Why, why don't I do... Uh, how many, you've only got four left, haven't you? I've got right. four in each. So I've, I've got, yeah, mine might take too long, but... Right. I've got some good okay. reasons for and after. So. Way back when, end of January last year, now, um, pressure drop. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. 10% stout, nice, <laughs> gloopy uh, stout. Um, it's fantastic. What do you expect from what you expect from pressure drop? If I'm honest, it is a f great beer, uh, but it's not going to win. It's not going to win. It's a great headliner. It's a great starter. Um, there you go. And it was the first, it wasn't the first alcoholic drink of, um, that year. I started my dry mm -hmm. January late. And I ended it when I chose to end it and I'm not bothered. Um, next. Now you were a bit surprised I put this one in, but I did have it in this year. Our friends, Mad Yank, who we did a fantastic interview, a second interview with, um, yep. and they are nominated your coconuts offend me uh, it's very thin marshmallowy sweet stout now hence emphasis on the word thin I'd love to have this on tap cask mm -hmm. preferred um, if it could be done in cask I don't see why not kind of thinking if you can do broken dream on cask you can do anything on cask um so that might win. Um, might win. Yep. Yeah. Uh, come back to the Don't worry, Rasko. Go on, carry on. No, no, no. I've finished with a beer description, so now's the perfect time. Hello, Beardy Beer Reviews. Hello. I wave it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's talking to each other every single yeah, time. They're saying the last thing they got nominated for was when they got bronze in a camera award about in about yes. 2016. So. I'm fairly yes. certain we can at least improve on that, John. I don't want to say too much. Yes. I'll build it up even more, you know. I'll move along to Pomona Island. Okay. One Man Conga Imperial Pineapple and Mango Passion Fruit Sour. And it is all of those descriptions there. It is literally... Mm -hmm. A fantastic, refreshing, fruitiest drink I've ever had. Sour. Note, it's Imperial. Imperial is definitely the theme of this year for me. Um, right. Everything is Imperial, pretty much. And but this is because this is 10%, so I suppose this is, isn't it? Mm. Well, yeah. And another Pomona Island, Superman's Big Sister. Now, I had to research this. I did some research for the show. Um, it's a chili beer. It's got chilies in it. Oh, I had it twice. I didn't taste the chilies once, but it was delicious. <laughs> it was absolutely delicious. It, it, it was. Um, it, it's a pretty it's strong impact and aroma as soon as you open the can. Um, but it's not much else I can remember off the top of my head of it. So it's not going to win. Well, this is the trouble with that. Like, when we get to the end of this year, I often find that well, the beers I've had in the second half of the year are kind of uppermost in my mind for nominations, but I always yeah. try and kind of balance it out a bit. Yeah. And then I had a long, long gap of nominating anything. And then one night, I go down to the Art and Craft, my local, and I sit down on Thursday evening, and I have Sirens, Haunted House, Barrel-Aged Imperial... It's a sweet raisin-like fruit stout, a little bit. Um, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely fucking gorgeous. And it's a bit boozy, too, and I, I like that. I really yeah. like that, because I don't drink spirits much these days. Although I did have a bit of Japanese whiskey last night on the house. Thank you, Art and Craft. Um, and, yeah, so that might win. So, around about June, July-ish time, I venture over to um, 
the Southampton Arms in Kentish Down, North London. And I have on Cloud Waters multi dimensional approach, an imperial double New England IPA. And it is multi dimensional in taste. Okay. It's literally layered in flavors. Um, and I'm glad some, I had it a few times actually um, that night, and I had quite a few beers that night. Bizarrely, you didn't get a hangover. No, go figure. Um, and yes, that is an amazing drink. I want to have more of it. It's not going to win. Ruling them out straight away. That's good. Yep. Getting a bit ruthless tonight. S43 DCLVVI. It's oh. a, yeah, I don't know how the hell you pronounce it. Um, not a cheap one, again, from the Art and Craft. Um, had it in bottle. I drank it on a live show here, or after a live show here, either of which. Um, fun. Really smoked. Is it smoked? Fuck, I'm struggling to remember. It's great. Yeah, it is smoked. It was. Yeah, I think it was, Im mate, yeah. Imperial Russian. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's not going to win. Really, really fantastic drink. Uh -huh. Don't get me wrong. And that's how high this bar is. I love smoked beer. It's not going to yeah. win. Is that, does that, is that like on price you couldn't drink it too often and too much a because of price and b how rich it is or is that because of it didn't quite wow you enough on the smoke or what um the second bit the the, the, the smoke there was a metallic hint in it mm -hmm. um <laughs> says, rasco the crusher of breweries eh? it with one hand and takes away with the other <laughs> yes yes yeah. I like that. It's my new name, Crusher. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, I think you pretty much, yeah, the, there was a slight, just a slightness with the um, drink, but it was very good. At, I would, I, all of these beers I happily drink again. Mm. Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah. So, Mad Yank and Pomerma Island are still on the list. There's a few other okay. beers on the list. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, Vocation. Um, we had it the Chili Beer Night. Uh, fuck, what was the name of that again? Big Dark Chili or something like that. Um, yeah. Very chocolatey. You know, if you do um, a chili beer, you've got to make put, put some chocolate in it, I think. It's the only way to balance it out. That's a fact. If, it if, a if it's going to be chocolate, you've got to have chocolate in a chocolate and chili. It's got to have that balance, isn't it? Mm. Crush a podcast with Rasco and Disco. Yes. <laughs> That's a good name. Um, and it was great. It was just the smell of it. And as soon as I had a sip, of it, I was like, whoa. I did nominate on the first sip. I did nominate Pomona Island's um, big sister, Superman's big sister, pretty much on the first sip had that with Craig Kent beer review on the show I'm actually going to get, do some flashbacks and put self plugging yeah. by the way doing it tonight um, but yeah um, that was a fantastic drink it might win okay who knows um I'm getting, and what else? I'm getting an by you. <laughs> mm. um, and the last but not least. Anyway, go on. Wild Cards, Jammer, New England IPA, brought from uh, Hop and Vine and Ryslip, who are now under a different manager called Alex, because Rick has left. Farewell, Rick. I didn't try any of that IPA dedicated to him. I just can't get to everywhere. Um but good luck to them. Yeah. Um, that was absolutely fucking gorgeous. You wildcard have a, their own distinct uniqueness with their drinks, which is quite common amongst really good breweries. Um, so you can almost do a blind tasting. No, it's one of theirs. 
And while Cardiff got that, and they do their light beers brilliantly and spectacularly, I've been to their brewery. I've had a, quite a few. Um, I like what they do. Um, I just throw this in there. They have got a nomination for brewery of the year off me. Um, Jammer was just so smooth on your tongue. It glided. And it left so many good tastes on your tongue. So I had to get a nomination. Um, what I'm saying, you probably think, oh, it's just good for, for beers. But no, this was really next level stuff. So I've got a nomination. That could win. Let's go. Let's know what you got. Uh, what? Nominations? Yeah, man. Okay, my nominations for Beer of the Year. Uh, I put a post up earlier. Um, they're right behind me here. Uh, my nominations are this. Uh, it's mad. I a little number here from McCall's Brewery up in the northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, Beach de Garde, mm -hmm. seven point one percent beetroot beer de Garde, which is a, a Belgian. Uh, oh, this is a 20, 21 edition. They did one the previous year as well, uh, which I think got quite near my. Um, beer of the year um mm. doesn't matter if you don't taste don't like beetroot it's not a massive beetroot taste it's just kind of a sweetness a kind of sort of vegetableness sits against the kind of belgian farmhousey yeast flavors um mm. it's really intriguing really something a bit different again all my beers have got adjuncts in them um i do love a bit of adjunct there all right steve good sir uh talking of adjuncts uh one that i talked a lot about this week uh, this year and actually got a lot in is uh, I can't see that. Oh, there we go. Heretic from Brass Castle. Keller Surprise, another Yorkshire brewery. Um, a saffron and cracked black pepper Belgian blonde. So another Belgian ale. Two Belgian ales in there this year. Um, I went back for that. I got some from the brewery. Uh, I picked some up from uh, Micro Beer Crate, which is uh, a small online beer shop up here in um, Hertfordshire, just up the road. Just qualified for free delivery. Uh, so cheers to them. I haven't had a chance to go back to them. Um, but then I picked some more up on another Brass Castle order. Brass Castle fell, falling away a little bit over the second half of the year. I think they've been focusing more on their uh, draft, uh, on their cask output. Uh, and finally, it's uh, these two. I've been banging on about these quite a lot all year as well. Black Forest, a pastry stout from Mad Dog Brewery in South Wales. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's one I went back for. And this one here, Wild Weather, Cake Batter Batter Swing. <laughs> a 6.2% dark cherry and vanilla black lager. Since we were talking about black lagers earlier. Mm -hmm. um, very, very similar in taste, these two. That's a pastry stout. This one's a dark lager. It's got a light body, but tastes like a pastry stout. Amazing. Nice. Amazing flavours. Again, I'm not sure there's any adjuncts in that one. There must be some cherry puree in that one. Um, but great flavours. Great wow moment uh, initially. And went back for more with those. Uh, I went back for several uh, of the Cape Batter Batter Swing. Cape Batter Batter Swing, of course, was what we found. One of the, beer, uh, one of the beers uh, that we found on the... World Cup of Beers that we uh, had a show about mm. earlier on in the year. Uh, and seeing that on there and then finding out about Wild Weather, making it available, uh, I went in for it. Uh, Bowman's joined us. Oh, Bowman. Hello. Hey, um, that, that's true. That reminds me, the World Cup of Beer is coming up again soon in February, I believe. It's a big Twitter event um, where people get the vote for that uh, for breweries literally breweries square off against each other and a great twitter vote goes on for several weeks mm. and keeps us entertained um i hope <laughs> lords are in it if not lords aren't in it i will try and get you in it don't know mm. if i can do that but now oh, right. um anyway um and you know what i really like about the world cup thing is that it was won by an unknown it it was a dragon slayer contest a giant Absolutely. slayer contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green Duck again. Green Duck should have been in and around my brewery or beer of the year list. 
I never quite got to go back to them to pick up some more stuff. They have got a fair bit of stuff out at the moment. Look really yeah. good, but I kind of had to be really selective in the second half of, of 2021 with money and, and, and getting orders in and stuff like that. So Green Duck is probably one to, to look again uh, for next yeah. year. So Yeah, I, I completely forgot and didn't do it. <laughs> uh, anyway. They're mild. Their mild was really good. Yeah, yeah. Mild. So, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to announce your beer ah. here? Ah, I forgot one. Weird beard. Ooh. Weird beard. Uh, hippie. Ah, oh, drink. It's an imperial surprise, surprise. With yeah. um, mad hip. It's a mad hippie drink or something. Uh, like that. Something hating hippie. Yeah, something hippie, hippie. hippie. Yeah. Yeah. It had lots of cinnamon in it, and um, it was absolutely gorgeous. I had – I loved it. You know, I text Craig, who was at the beer festival, Kent Beer Review, and said, this is brilliant. Get some. And he goes, yeah, it's all right. And I'm like, what? 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 <laughs> um, it was absolutely gorgeous. I went back for more. It ran out. Yeah. It was gorgeous. It was an imperial, a theme, the not intended mm. theme for me. Yeah, imp impy hating hit hippie. That's it, impy hating hippie. Um, it's not going to win. <laughs> um, I have been disorganised with my notes on beer of the year ship. I think the beast from S forty three even got a nomination at one point. But it's not going to win. <laughs> Guess what? That, that's um, Imperial as well. In fact, I'm nominating S43 because I don't like their marketing approach. Um, it says a lot. You know, they're in some great beer. Um, yes. So, do we want to do breweries of the year or do we want to announce the beer of the years? I think let's do the announcement. I think, and then we can move on to brewery of the year afterwards. Okay. Well. Well, oh we, could, we could run through the nominations for brewery of the year if you want first. I don't mind. Up to you. Okay. Well, that won't take too long for me. Okay. How many have you got on there? Because um, you only have three. Hmm. Three. Three. Out of all the breweries, you've gone for three nominations. Okay, let's yes. hear it. Let's see your free. Let's see your free again. So, um, brewery of the year is a difficult, difficult one to get off me. Um, it's based on groundbreaking. Uh, it's what you're doing, how you're approaching yourself. Will you be interviewed by me? Um, do you like me? Um, are you giving me free drinks? That type of thing. You know, brown envelopes as well, also acceptable. <laughs> um, but there you go. Last year, Mad Yank got it off me because um, they are a small, groundbreaking brewery, which has changed my conception of darks, dark beers, and how it can be. Uh, the suspense is killing me. Oh, John, you're prepared. Cool, man. So my nominations <laughs> are first but yeah go and carry on the, the my nominations are Pomoma Island um simply because you know last year they got a co-nomination for a beer um there was um mad truckers something and that was a collaboration with Beak um and they've just been consistent from the end of last year to the beginning of this year of everything they've been doing I, I like their sours you know, I don't necessarily like the sales. I love the sales. I love every single beer they do. Um, and I like the can art of what they're doing um, and just the high quality approach and the slight distinction with them. Mm. So I'm kind of like, well, you've got to have a beer of the year nomination. Fair play, uh, fair play. Manchester based brewery. Um, do you want to say one and then I'll say one and then? No, do yours, do yours, and then I'll do mine. Okay. The next one I have to nominate is Albert's, uh, the Czech brewery. Um, because of its uh, slightly unique approach of folk craft and tradition of Czech beers, it is 
something I could not ignore. And I briefly met with him at the Czech Embassy, had a brief, brief chat. And um, their beers are gorgeous. I really, really like them. Um, they're kind of a bit different, but not that different. And it's just great. So, yeah. There you go. Number three. Yeah. Wild, wild card. Now, I had the pleasure to meet Jagerwise um, at Brew London very briefly. We have a cut. We have a friend in common. We spoke about this friend in polite terms. Um, and um, I, as I said, wild card. They're kind of outside of, just on the fringes of where the big boy Premier League of craft beer is. But I'm not sure they actually want to go into that league. But at the same time, there's no limits to their ambition and what they want to do. Um, mm. John is scrambling to find a brown envelope. I've only got white ones. Oh, dear. Well, I wish you hadn't said that, Rasko, because we've always said we're not that kind of... I know it's a joke. I'm, I'm not going to go on a rant here, but we're, we're not that kind of beer reviewers. We just like say as we see it and as it is and with the beers and all that. But to be fair, John done us a solid earlier, like uh, allowed us to buy. He's got that great pack on the website with uh, four beer reviewers. Do, do a yeah. little uh, was it, um, press pack. Yeah. 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 Press pack. That's it. Uh, and well, that was pretty solid. To be fair, there's some good beers in there and all the ones I wanted. So that was kind of handy. Let us, let us, let me buy two of them actually for the, uh, for the 24 hour live that he did so um, yeah it's not about brown or white envelopes um, it's just about good beer so um, yeah sorry carry on Masco <laughs> oh, but I'll Masco is obviously it. fine with brown envelopes <laughs> yes uh, I'm fine I'm fine with all sorts of envelopes there yeah. hey um, so there you go um, and th that's it there's my free that it was the free breweries of what is hmm. and there you go um, so there we go no, 42 minutes into the show this is going a lot quicker than I thought uh, no yeah well, don't worry don't worry we'll get there my, my brewery of the year nominations uh, I haven't got many more than you because I do like to keep it down to four I kind of get it down to four mostly because it makes a nice little picture when I post it on Twitter or Instagram um, but yeah my brewery of the years um, I put Wild Weather in there again uh, I know we've talked about them with the uh, kick back bat swing but all the wild weather beers I had have been brilliant uh, I've still got a couple that I haven't got around to doing uh, so I really enjoyed all of theirs um, oh that was the other point I was going to make yeah before I go on to the, the nominations I did want make I did want to make special mentions in the brewery of the year category that I didn't quite get into but it's definitely a special mention for um, McColl's uh, not only because of the the beetroot one um, but also because of this beer uh, do a lot of work for charity for men's mental health. Let's eat pies and talk about men's mental health. A uh, black and white pepper, 3.6% bitter. A really, a really solid beer. Um, and Phil's McCall's, asked uh, me a question. Phil's asked me one question. Phil, mm -hmm. it's Wild Card, it's Pomona Island, and Albert. Okay, cool. Albert, yeah. Uh, so yeah, my, my special mentions are for McColl's uh, and also for Lincoln Green, uh, not just for what they did for Raggy for getting the, the Raggy's Golden Ale out, uh, uh, a trolley splendid golden ale. Uh, and there was some, uh, I got their box. Uh, it's a brewery that's, you know, fairly well established, traditional cast brewery. I've uh, been aware of their beers for a long time. It's the first time I've got some in in bottles, obviously over lockdown. Uh, they've got some really other good beers, the old Bailey. Uh, the Bailey's flavour beer was good um, but for other reasons that I'll come on to later the other beers the other breweries just kind of beat there in, basically it's about the beers so I've got Wild Weather as a nomination uh, I have got um, I have got Turning Point as a nomination I had quite a lot of their beers uh, this year some really good stuff again another Yorkshire brewery uh, I got I put Toast in there did have a can available for toast. Yeah, toast for what they're doing about uh, using recycled bread, uh, a lot of good environmental stuff coming out of London. Um, I enjoyed the pack I got from them. Uh, and obviously, of course, as we all know, I put Lords in there as well on merit because of uh, 
basically the fun we've had with Lords. Uh, and I've got Band and Car there, and I should have mentioned Band and Car. I've given a special mention in my beer of the year category that sort of should have probably got in there if I'd thought about it a bit more. We had this discussion with Mark on his uh, show the other week about Band and Car being actually a jolly fine porter. I had another porter the other week. I haven't reviewed it yet from um, Dorset. Just a straight eight grain porter. Uh, it was very similar to this. So that might have got in there if I'd had it earlier as well. Gone up against each other. But mm. big props to John for that. Um, yeah, so that's my four. My four contenders are Wild Weather, Turning Point, Toast and Lords. Yeah. So no announcements yet. Uh, I think we better get on to some announcements, Rasko, keeping the uh, audience waiting as we are. Oh, well, Craig, uh, happy new year to you, Craig. Indeed. indeed. So uh, what are your drinking, fellas? It's not like I'm going to keep you waiting, but I am. Um, what are your drinking, fellas? And what are your thoughts on beer and brewery of the year? Um, if we were, um, well, if this was Channel 4 or ITV, we'd be going for a commercial break right now. Um, just... <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Three minutes in, we've I've only announced one beer of the year. That's that's my disco beer of the year. That's not the main beer of the year. Uh, yeah, Neil yeah, Raptors, yeah. uh, disco vampire, just catching up for people. We've just got in. So um, mm. go on, Masco, do your beer of the year. Well, first of all, last night at the Art Craft, I was asked why I wasn't Anne Spatchin Hot Day in my beer of the year, and they. Surely question. Point. They, I said, look, they did get two nominations early on, but I kind of discounted them. But I love the beers, the American Brown and the Baltic Porter, um, which I'm thoroughly, thoroughly in love with. But And I kind of couldn't answer it. I and mean, they said it should be on your beer list because of London Black and what they're trying to do with London Black. And the best way to describe London Black is what Guinness should be. <clears throat> and I like Guinness. But this is better. And yeah. they, they're going around the pubs and they've done a crowdfunding project on it. And they're trying to get Guinness introduced and out there. And, you know, it's got a great commercial intention. And, you know, radically changing beer as it is. Well, pushing beer flavours and changing yeah. the way we perceive and taste. And I couldn't not give a reason why other than... I just rave on about them so much. It just seems silly. I would shouldn't shouldn't that, get your, that would go into your Brewery of the Year nomination? Mm. It should. And it might. This year. <laughs> oh, yeah, we are in a new year, aren't we? <laughs> so, Happy I'd like to nominate Hans Fashion Hob Day for Brewery of... The year for 2022. Here we go. <laughs> That's a neat way of getting around it, Rasko. I've yes. got to say that. Props yes. for thinking. But yeah, okay. All right. We will allow that. We'll allow that. We've yeah. got no choice. Yeah, fair yeah. play. Fair play. Right. So, um, yeah, that happened. So, here we go. So, we've got the three. Albert, Wildcard, and uh, Pomona Island. Right, I'm going to be honest. Albert, you are the weakest link. Um, simply because, well, there is no because. It's just... Mm, mm, mm. I think it's just it, of a connection there because of, like, you, we've only had a few beers of theirs. You like what they do, I well, think. I had a, I had a box <laughs> when sat outside their little stand <laughs> at the <laughs> Czech Embassy, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it comes down to it. Oh, my, why am I announcing my breweries? Why am I not announcing my beer of the year? That's what I'm, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Do beer of the year first. Yeah, yeah, beer of the year first. Uh, so who I have left? I forget now. Um, Mostly because I'm drinking my beer of the year for the next one and I'm kind of running out. So yeah, I need you to crack on son. <laughs> well, okay. Um, so it, Mad Yank, second nomination for beer of the year. The last year they were nominated and they won Brewery of the Year. Where do your coconuts offend me? And it was what else? It was Jammer by Wildcard. Um, but I'm going to be honest and frank. Pomona Island made my head turn. 
They got me to love, love, love a sour. And it, <laughs> it was just absolutely gorgeous. So hands down, I had that back in April. Pomona Island have won. Um, beer of the year off Frasco. Congratulations, mm -hmm. Pomona Island. Fair play, Pomona Island. Cheers. Beer of the year for Rasco's yeah. Beer of the year 2021. I have to say, I had a couple of uh, Pomona Island, my first Pomona Island order. Uh, mostly based around a couple of beers they had with Disco in the name. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't get them from Pomona Island because there was so much good stuff on their website, I would have spent too much money. I went to Trembling Madness and picked up a few other bits and pieces and made a small order out of it. So, um, yes, it's one I would like to do a bit more. And it's probably like, you know, quite a big, fairly trendy brewery. Uh, a lot of their stuff about, a lot of well thought of beers. So it's a great shout. Uh, if you enjoyed the beers and they did that for you, absolutely. Spot on, Rasco's. Hello. And um, Craig is saying, I think Pipeline Brewing Co. I need to watch out for. John is saying, well, Lords are saying, well done. And Brandon's joined. Hello, Brandon. Hi. Oh, Welcome cheers. to the main event. Right, I've um, really enjoyed this. I've really enjoyed this Neon Raptor Vampire Disco. He's nearly gone. I'm going to neck it down. The fruit is still there. The fruit is amazing in that. Um, again, it's a sour. Who would have thought it, Rasko? Mm. Oh. Rasko, what I'm going to do next, I think I'm going to do my beer of the year next. Go for it, mate. You go for it. So I managed to get down to four, and obviously we have slightly different reasons for what we do for beer of the year. That's why we have two, because we're never really going to agree, because we don't have the same beers. I go for stuff that... Um, has really wowed me from that first sip like you said earlier that wow moment that and that was what that did that's why it went into disco beer of the year could have gone in the beer of the year as well but i don't think it would have won because it's sour uh, and i think the other beers wowed and impressed me more and made me go back for more i've had a lot of really good beers this year that i haven't they were great on the one or two cans i had but they didn't inspire me that much to go back for them all the ones in mine really made me go back from like i say the heretic from brass castle the kind of savory flavors in it from the belgian beer made me go back for more uh, i would like to have had the mad dog black forest again i hope they do it again because i actually got that one i say last year because i still think it's 2020 but i got that in 2020 at the back end and then i got some more in january so that was a very very early contender and stuck with it um the beat the guard again i had that for the second year the, the beetroot flavor it was again really great a slightly odd flavor i do love uh, an odd bit of flavor and like i say the cake batter batter swing from wild weather with the cherries um and the uh i don't get vanilla in a beer so i wasn't so fussed i didn't get that much vanilla in that one but um uh the combination of that and the way it was a it was a dark lager that felt like an imperial stout a pastry stout um i'm gonna just basically crack the beer of the year and show it to you Disco's Disco Disco's beer of the year for 2021 is and I don't think this is a surprise slightly odd sized glass but it came in the pack that uh, the lovely Sarah actually got me this uh, lovely little glass do love the artwork Bard Weathers cake batter batter swing is my beer of the year for 2021. Fantastic. Cheers, well, congratulations. Hey, Kate Batter bat Swing. Hey, that's a pretty good one. I'm, I'm opening one of my Loki, Loki Air beers. It's not okay. got the Emperor's face on it. This might make beer of no. the year. No, it now is. I think we had this discussion uh, midweek when he was on John's. I think the low-key barrel project was the one that you didn't like. John asked you whether there was one that you really didn't like. Not that you didn't like, you just weren't impressed by it. And I think it was the low-key barrel project yeah. one on the show. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, um, I didn't. I was actually really disappointed with it. But um, well, one I hated most, the Titanic style from Bottle. I fuck. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, but yeah, I was really disappointed by it because... You know, it was a nice little story behind it. The Art and Craft put up on their social media. They only had six of these um, free types. 
of beer. Um, and I um, they put up within 30 minutes of putting up on their social media. I purchased free, and you know I paid 30 quid for free. Mm. I've got high hopes when I spend over a tenner. Um, you know, there's, you it's, it, it does put more pressure on the drink and your palate. You're right, but, because I, one I've had from Loki this year probably should have, arguably, I would have expected to be in me Disco's Disco Beer. It was a Disco Demolition Derby. Uh, I think it was chocolate, Tonka, cherry, in barrel-aged imperial stuff. And it was good, but it didn't blow my mind. You know, and I keep using this term, it was just a, uh, and I always say it was just a reasonably, it was quite smooth, quite thick, quite nice. It was, it was okay. It was drinkable. It was a lovely, you know, it's a nice one to finish on. Yeah, it was 10% or whatever, but um, yeah, sorry, good point, Phil. Sorry, John, to keep you in suspenders in this manner, but um, yeah, sure, beers, baby. <laughs> and also because I'm drinking the winners, so like, yes. oh, no, you know, I'm drinking the winners. So I wanted to get this one in because this is my second beer. Like, you know. I'm not drinking the winners. I'm drinking the nominees. Get, guys, if you have to leave, we don't want you to leave. We are available on playback here on Instagram, and the show will be uploaded to YouTube. So our eventual move over to YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, I'm I'm using my Brad. I'm going to nickname this. I got this for Christmas. My Brad to um open this i say i call it a brad because he recommended on his lowbrow show of the craft beer channel um it's this thing is heavily waxed this bowl so the brad is taking a pounding fucking getting this thing open um it's a shame so i have to kind of like but what's good about this is that it slides on top of the bottle and it stays fresh for three days some have disputed, i.e. Crumbly Beard, but I believe in Brad. I think we all disputed that you don't, if, you, if you're if you keeping a bottle for three days, you should hand your drinking cards in. Nobody yeah. opens a bottle keeps it for three days, just drink the thing. Yeah, yes, yeah, so but now you don't have to. Anyway, you you disputed it just because you disputed it, but hey, anyway, I've got <laughs> this and you don't. Basco, move to YouTube, we will see... Ming, you will, you will. Yeah, oh, Lord, yeah. just... we will sort that out in the new year. We, we, I think we did have this discussion whether to do the show on YouTube straight, but it was like, well, we built it up on Instagram, so we better finish it off. And it is, all right, it's the new year, but it's kind of the last show of the year. Uh, so we'll yes. see what happens from here on in, on in uh, from twenty twenty two. Right, so Rasko, you've done your brewery of the year. No, I've done my beer of the year. Oh, that's right, you've done your beer of the year. I've done my beer of the year. Um, I thought. Oh dear. Oh dear. Have you been a little bit mugged off, Rasco? I have. This is <laughs> a. The in terms of aroma, you get some yeasty, really strong yeast. It's a chocolate and Tonka barley wine. I should have aged it. Oh, you. Oh, oh. <laughs> fuck! But let's let's test the Brad out. Let's see how long the Brad lasts. Well, okay. Oops, I got the wrong one out. Uh, Should have fucking read it. Anyway, fuck it. Bottoms up. Right. Happy New Year. Yeah. I'm already. Okay, let's go. I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused, right? Yeah. You're. I thought Ooh. you just did. Beer of the year. I did beer of the year. What was your beer of the year then? Pomoro Island's um, uh, One Man Conga. One Man Conga, right, okay, my apologies. Okay, that's fine. That's good. I was confused because I think I, I think I erroneously said that was your beer of the year. So that's your beer of the year is Pomona Island, Pomona Island One Man Conga. I'm only, I'm only writing it down so that when we do the notes later, I can, like, tag it properly because I'll go back and add it in. But, uh, well, hang on. If you've got the cap, the cap only lasts three days. So you're not going to age it much in three days. Well, I, I know. I'm not going to age it. <laughs> I'm going to accept I made a schoolboy error. Mm. Um but oh well, because um, at the moment I've just got a load of stuff 
in the stash, which is just say, age me, age me, age me. And yeah. um, I, I've got, I can't age you all. I need some room. In the well, You've got the third Loki bottle. I suppose you can age that because that would be a big beer as well, wouldn't it? It will be. You know, barley wines are specific for aging. Um, I, I remember saying, I should age this one for a year. Um, be fair, though. It's just, it's fucking grand as it is. Um, don't get much... Don't get much... Um, very sweet. Would you expect that from barley wine? But kind of um, sherry-like sweet. I guess it could be like a chocolate sherry-ness going on. And it's good. It's fun. It's fun. I'm glad. I'm glad I've got it. But the other one, I wasn't so glad to have. But I'm glad I've got this. There you go. So, brewery of the year. The, yeah. Comes down to two for me. Uh -huh. the, the hipsters of East London or the hipsters of Manchester um, in terms of no knowledge from my island I don't know a lot about them mm. um, they have a brief look and it's just a brewery really wildcard seem to want to I don't know reinvent the world a bit it's good for them they can do that they've got a, a semi-celebrity uh jager the superwoman who does who is a hell of a singer tv presenter mm -hmm, yeah. and actress yeah yeah um john is dying well don't die yet yeah, um, sure I'm <laughs> but i'm gonna have to give this to pomomer island what? Yes. I'm giving the Pomona Island over the East London hipsters uh, that are wild cut. They're not hipsters. Well, they are hipsters. You should go see their brewery. They're hipsters. Um, because you they're consistent. He hasn't told me that because you can see the look of surprise on my face. That's not what I was expecting you to do, but fair play. Ah. Um, no, because. Um, their level of consistency in their drinks was just outstanding. Mm. How, how could I not? In the first four months and last two months of last year, was just dominated by them for me. Um, and I just love it. I'm instantly drawn to them. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, and they've, they've all I've thought about. And I've had a lot of great beers. Um, hasn't been like last year to get enough, well, I was nominating everything under the sun almost. Um, but you know, I've had a lot of great beers. The beer, the bar just go goes higher and higher. And for a moment, Byland, well, got over that bar. Well done, congratulations. Why were you Fair expecting play. me to say wild card? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was originally expecting you to do Albrecht, but since you knocked that one out fairly certain, fairly early out oh. the two, I was um because you did have a couple of guys i i haven't i've been very remiss in uh in the last uh 18 months of uh overlooking slightly my london breweries that i would normally go and visit you know so i haven't got any uh, i've had a couple of wildcard beers on 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 selection boxes but i haven't gone to a lot of london breweries apart from kind of me locals like um uh, like weird, uh, like the Mad Yank and um, Pear of Ale and Weird Beard and a few others. Mm. Uh, my London breweries, I've, I've sort of neglected a lot, so I wouldn't have put Wildcard in there, although I obviously love what Jaeger's doing and stuff like that. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I thought you would go there. That's where I thought you would go with that one, Pomona Island. So, uh, mm. Not Pomona Island. So. Fair play. So, quick, clean sweep for Pomona Island for you. Yes, it is. Well done. Mm -hmm. Well done. Two certificates on the post on the way to you eventually. Get that in. Well, yeah. I suppose, unless we drag it out any longer, I should put John out of his misery now, really, one way or well, the other. We could talk about the football. How are Flymouth doing? <laughs> we haven't had a game for two games. All got the run, haven't Oh, really? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Bottoms up. Mm -hmm. Have you had, is there any other highlights of 2021 before I get on to the Brewery of the Year, Rasko, for you? We've had a lot of 
we've talked to a lot of people we've done a lot of new things we've had a lot of fun we've had a lot of beers any other highlights worth mentioning uh, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone who's appeared on the show um absolutely you know, you know we started with mad yank they came on for a second time this year um we got craig and beer reviews in we got um adam from a time for a brew podcast who does the beer world cup um brewery on twitter um we got hop scene in and then eventually because john was in the comments we said hey john you want to be on the show next week yeah fine john came on the show mm -hmm. yeah. we got um turning point in we got crumbly mm -hmm. beard in we've got paul um we've had pivo and i think pivo might have been my favorite sorry guys um yeah, yeah. We, have, we haven't done that as an award for, for our favourite guest. But no, you're right, that was a lot of fun. I mean, they were all, they were all good fun, all a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of information from, from the guys at Pivo, I think. Yeah, um, good information. Of, you know, beers and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, like you say, John's been really good. Uh, and also away from Instagram, away from the show, John's been brilliant with his stuff on YouTube, I've got to say yeah, that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And a lot of fun, he's done a lot of good shows on there. Uh, and encouraging not just for us but for other beer reviewers as well mm -hmm. yeah. and, and got onto YouTube and embraced that and, and, and he doesn't just do beer shows as well he does a lot of other interest shows where he's got the interest in the cars and stuff like that so um, yeah. good stuff I, I got my podcast debut from John actually you know? I was on his yeah. podcast yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah just like a big thank you to any guests um hopefully we haven't missed any guests there uh, but you know um highlights uh, i'd say brew london um wish i'd actually made more of brew london not had a bad day and got horrendously pissed because i had a bad day um but you know london craft beer festival was a lot of fun czech beer embassy was a lot of fun going to the hope for their festivals even when I couldn't taste a thing, was fun. Um, even though they didn't want to make me cry, I'm not kidding. Mm. I did. Um, go, going, seeing pubs. I tell you what, my highlight is in April time when pubs got to reopen, and the buzz and the atmosphere and the relief was fantastic. I'm going to go mad with the podcast this year. Yeah, go mad. Go on, mate. Go for it. Um, but yeah, that is my highlight. Mm. that was absolutely spectacular and long made it stay open in the most safest way possible there you go <laughs> all right um, yeah let's let's move on so i'm gonna do now because i've got quite a lot to say because um yes i've got to be honest i think more so than last year it was quite difficult i think this one for me to mm. kind of split it down last year by the way my um my brewery of the year was quite difficult and I did I kind of spread it out a little bit because it was down to two last year again another Yorkshire brewery Bass Castle was my brewery of the year last year and it was between them and Drygate up in Glasgow and I, mm. I, I kind of had a lot of orders beers from them both so I kind of I put uh, the Double Orinoco from Drygate as my beer of the year because it was genuinely fantastic uh mocha stout milk stout really enjoyed it and i went with brass castles my beer of the year because i think i had slightly more beers from them so it was about the beer it was about you know um the, the amount of beers and the amount of really good beers that i enjoyed um this year it's i don't know i like to keep keep it about the beer a little bit um uh, as I said, the special mentions there, Lincoln Green and McCall. McCall's have got some good stuff on their website at the moment. They've got, a, they've got a coffee stout that I've heard really good things about. And they've got a cherry Dunkelweissen. And I've got into Dunkelweissens a little bit this year, especially because they're a bit darker. So, And I love cherry. I do like cherry. Uh, I know Hopsin will hate me for saying that because he's not a big fan of it. But um, uh, <laughs> So I'm looking at McCall's as a possible order. Um, right, so... Out of the four then, Wild Weather, Turning Point, Lords and Toast. In at number four, I'm going to do a, a final four countdown. In at number four for me was Toast, because uh, I love what they do with the recycling. Uh, I love the way they uh, they did a great pack uh, around COP26. They did 
26 collabs, with, uh, uh, sorry, 25 collabs with 25 different breweries, including one with Guinness, and you don't see a Guinness collab too much. Uh, unfortunately for me in my particular situation, uh, it was something like 89 quid, and as much as I wanted to do it and pull the trigger, uh, but 89 quid for 26 beers was a thoroughly good price. Mm. It's just the fact it was 89 quid, and I, I want to, I want to, and I kind of ummed and ahed. I went in for their competition, I didn't. That's not why I'm putting them in fourth. Uh, that's my own personal, uh, that's my own personal financial situation. Like there is no money resting in my account uh, to misquote Father Ted. But yeah, in at number four is Toast because they do a lot of good work. All the like, I don't quite get the whole surplus bread thing because if there's surplus bread, shouldn't the bakers just be baking less bread and it wouldn't be a problem? But they do take all this surplus bread and, and turn it into great beer. Um, Can I explain about, surplus bread? Well, I, I get it, you know, but there should be just less bread. Um, the beers for me in the pack that I had, and their core range stuff is okay, uh, and I had like a, what did I have? I had a chocolate stout, which was okay, but not amazing. I had a, um, a lemongrass lager that turned out to be 0.5%, which was a good, not a low alcohol beer, to be fair, quite, quite good fun. Uh, I had a mango IPA wasn't enough mango in it for me they were just sort of they didn't quite hit the mark for me so great great idea the way they do it but they didn't just quit hit the mark that's why they were at number four love what they did uh in a number three i'm actually putting wild weather um because the top three are so so many variables and so many reasons why in at number three i ended up stopping looking at wild weather's website because I enjoyed every beer I had and I would have spent too much money. Um, and I've still got two or three in the cupboard that I haven't actually reviewed yet. Um, and because I enjoyed this one so much, I'm, I'm going to stop with Wild Weather because I've given them beer of the year. I'm going to step back from giving them brewery of the year as well. They're only in Reading, so at some point I really want to nip over to Reading and go and check them out. They've got a tap room over there just outside of Reading, so... Uh, a lot of really good beers. I haven't tried their core range, but their adjunct stuff like this, uh, and they've got like a like a banana IPA, an imperial banana IPA. I've got in a cupboard. Even their sours were pretty good. Um, Damn Dead series, Damn Dead Cucumber. I don't like cucumber in a beer. I like cucumber, but even that was pretty good. Damn Dead Black Current again. Not sure about Black Current. It kind of goes up against that one a little bit. Um, but this one's better because it's got more stuff in it. But um, yeah, wild weather, good bunch of beers. I sort of tailed off with a little bit, a little bit. And leaving my top two of Lords and Turning Point was a gift. And up until this week, I've not been able to separate them. And there's literally, for me, been a can label between them for various reasons. Like we were just saying, um, the interaction that we've had with both of the breweries have been brilliant. I say Cameron came on the show and was really helpful friendly. You met him at uh, the uh, beer Lung, festival. Lung craft was, yeah, Lung craft. Um, I've had, uh, we've had great interactions with Lords, like we've just said, obviously been on his show several times and uh, he's been really helpful and friendly to us, giving us lots of advice about getting on YouTube, mm. yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, he's missed, one or two of my really funny comments on his show. Um, <laughs> I think, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, sorry, John, I'm not going to drag it down for that, man. <laughs> Just got to say, I think they're funny. It doesn't mean you do. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, Adam has just wandered in from Mersey Beers. Uh, another guy we've had lots of good fun and chats with uh, over the course of the year. Um, I've had a lot of beers from Turning Point. Um, yeah. I did win their competition. I did win a lot of beers from them. I won a t-shirt. Um, so we've had different, in I've had different interactions with Turning Point. We had a couple of Zoom uh, meetings with Turning Point. So slightly less public than doing the stuff on YouTube, but they did a really good show. You know, it was a, a like a little tour of the brewery. They did it, you know, through Zoom. Um, and we had little competitions. They gave away some beer and merch and stuff like that. So that was a really good way of doing it and interacting with customers. You know, it was a fairly open event. It was like the first 50 to apply. Um, <laughs> so I jumped out my message. It's cool. I understand how YouTube works. But um, yeah, no. Um, so both of them, I've had that kind of really good interaction and that really, and the good beers. Um, 
I probably had slightly each of the each of the each of the time I've gone to Turning Point's website, there's been something else that makes me want to, you know, get involved. And even the stuff we bought for when when Cameron was on the show, like some of the IPAs, the Pilsner was really good. Um, probably edging. To, I was edging towards Turning Point because of the beers, and then I was edging back towards Lords because of the interaction and the fun and the good beers. Like I say, the the abandoned car, I was sort of like, that was actually, when Mark said that, I went, actually, I didn't forget about abandoned car, but it made me think a bit more, actually, yeah, that was, that's probably my favourite beer. The band one, the American Pale Ale, I think is actually a West Coast Pale Ale, um, and that sort of dragging me back towards West Coast a little bit. I love the flavour of that. I love the story that John puts behind the beers and the, the artwork he puts on hands um like the cars obviously he's got a big interesting car so i love the way he incorporates that into the artwork i love the way turning point love that kind of sci-fi vibe going on they got all the spaceships and the aliens and the cans they've got great can artwork so it's all like level of, basically it's like a, it's like a it's a trade-off between two different yorkshire breweries with various different things but i've got to say john i'm going to put you out of your misery now sorry to build it up i'm going to pour my my brewery of the year now and do you know what it comes down to rasco no it comes down to, at the end of the day it comes down to the beers and um again this is no slight on john but turning point do stouts turning point do stouts really well turning point do barrel, have a barrel age program and again that's just because they are probably slightly bigger in capacity um, I'm going with Turning Point as my brewery of the year just for the stuff they bring out. Listen to that. Grave Diggers Biscuits, Bourbon Barrel Aged Espresso Martini Stout. So I know John's in the comments. I'm sorry, John, but I'm going with Turning Point just because of what Turning Point do with their stouts and their barrel aging program. And... I will be getting my next order that I put through next week will be Lord's Brewing. It will be the ginger pale ale that he did with Paul. It will be the ESB that he did with um, Simon from Real Ale Craft Beer. Um, so to make up, and it's still beating your camera third. I'll, I'll put you into second, John. Lord's Brewing in second. Turning Point is my brewery of the year, 2021. <laughs> Comment in from John. I knew we needed to do a stout oh, or a porter. Oh. A oh, that is. Oh. You know, it's. I need, normally we go dark beers in the beer of the year. I have this. Now, I had this the original Grave Diggers biscuits, the espresso martini stout earlier on in the year. That's that what I'm talking about, about that old oh, wow, that mm, that's nice, I want more of that. So yeah, that is Rasco and Disco's Beer of the Year Awards. Mm. It should be said, um, and this is going about Brew London, one of the things I regret is I didn't get to try all the breweries I wanted to try. And yeah, for I sure. Didn't try a drop of Lords on tap, and it it was right there in front of me for free. <laughs> John says he's going to do a, dis a scout stout that's, that's called Disco Made Me. Well, that means that means you'd qualify for Disco's Disco Beer of the Year 2022 if you do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, um, well, that's a good point because that's one of the other things that I like. That ginger, that ginger pale ale that he did with Paul. And he had a discussion on one of his live shows. Mm -hmm. There was a guy, a, a, a guy in the in the chat whose dog had just passed away. His dog was called Jasper. And John went, "Well, that's what we're calling the beard." Of. He just named it after after uh, a fan in the chat, and just and and, and also it fitted. It just fitted a ginger pale ale. It was it was a great idea. Um, so I will be ordering some of that next week for sure. If it's still on, if it's still on sale. I'm sure it, it yeah. was the other day. Wasn't it? The the community interaction from Lords is highly notable. Uh, the charity 24 hour live was absolutely something yeah. I, I considered yeah. for nominating. 
The reason I didn't nominate Lords, uh, to be frank, is the only thing I've had is the press pack and one other beer I somehow got out of Brew London. Um, yeah. And on that grounds, I just thought oh, I needed a bit more. And <sighs> yeah, it was it was a difficult decision for me not to nominate them, um, if I'm honest. But it doesn't mean you can't get it this year. Yeah, we're in a new year now, aren't we, man? 2022. Here we are. We have effectively closed out 2021. Um, um, he does, says he doesn't mind losing the turning point. Well, I wouldn't think of it as a loss, to be honest. Um, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I, um, yeah, I mean, I have to be, as I said before, about being like, I don't know, it's not about honesty, it's just about saying, calling it like it is, that's what we do, that's like, if it had been the other way, it's not that if John had done a stout, I would have I would have put Lords in, it, it was just, you know, it's just, I call it as I see it, to be fair, and as John says, yeah, turning point is like, um, as well established, I think they're about the same year as, as, as Lords, they just sort of have grown a bit more in the early years, got that slightly greater capacity, so I see more and more of their beers mm. coming from and and I've just been every time I go on their website, I oh, want that. <laughs> so, I'll, and and also I see them because they're on, you know, they're on Instagram and, and Twitter. So I see when they do releases and that. Um, as much as I see John, every time I see Turning Point, so I I just like the sound of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your comments in from John, and he says, uh, "Hey, I don't mind losing to Turning Point. Uh, absolutely." Rasco, I believe, I'm not sure what he was absolutely for, I can't remember now. Awesome uh, start of the year, getting on board, absolutely happy, unhappy with it, Disco. Well done, Lords. In fact, well done, everyone. You know, I, I'm one tough cookie, <laughs> if I'm honest, and I'm, I'm a bit of an arse. Disco's the nice guy. Um, um, you know, well done for anyone who get, gets a mention for this or consideration to be perfectly honest. Um, but we start again. And we are vaguely drawing up plans. We are going to give a lot of coverage to the uh, World Cup brewery, which starts soon. We'll have to get in touch with Adam again. Um, I, don't think, I don't think that's until a little bit later. I think that's March, February April. Time. February. Yeah. February. Yeah, because I remember, because we were really struggling for content, and then this came on. So, all right, we're going to put some content on this, and it kept us going for well over a month. Um, yeah, well, we've got to ask more people to come on. I think I'm quite shy at asking people to come on. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure what Adam's doing because uh, he he sort of tailed off a little bit in the second half of the year. I didn't see so much postings from him. He's he hasn't done uh, anything on his podcast either, but. He is yeah, I think planning to I asked him via social media, are oh, you still planning to do it? He goes, yep, getting all set up. So there we go. That's one That's thing. Cool. Um, and it's a big thing because he had 700 like different beers last year and I think he's, he will definitely have more this year. You know? Yes, absolutely. Um, and then, look, we're going to have guests back on the show. We're going to have um, more guests on the show. Um, it stops us from talking to each other. Um, more games, yeah. More games, just every, everything we've done so far, but more enhanced by yeah. ten. And hopefully, um, more YouTube, more YouTube, and maybe even a few live location events. I'm keeping an eye yeah. on. Um, I sent you a WhatsApp actually. What the dates of GBBF? Potential yeah. dates of GBF. Um, I'm glad of that because it doesn't clash with um, a wedding in France I've been trying to go to for the past two years. Um, so, yeah, there we go. That is 2021 closed out. Um, That's it, yeah. It was, yeah. It's just one, one extra day of 2021 and just uh, a little recap and that's it. I mean, I will obviously post all the winners up probably tomorrow and stuff like that, but that, that's pretty much it, isn't it, for 2021? That that is it. Um, yeah. So th there you go, um, ladies and gentlemen. That is a wrap.
That is 2021. That is 2021. Thank you very much. We're, except for massive thanks to all of the people, the 700 people who've clicked subscribe on our thing. Everybody who's come in the chat uh, tonight and throughout the year, uh, led there by Philby Trill, as I keep calling him. Um, and massive thanks to, to John and Lords there. Uh, thanks to everybody who's commented or liked our posts over the year. And hopefully that carries on. Hopefully you like what we do. Uh, and thank you to everybody. If you're watching this back on YouTube and you're still watching at this point, thank you very much indeed. Please uh, comment and let us know what you want us to do, where you want us to go, what beers you want us to drink. And do all that like and subscribe business. Thank you very much indeed. Rasco, thank you. Thank you, even though we don't like each other. Thank you for... The, the beer companionship over the year, whether we've agreed or not. Cheers, bro. <laughs> let's Cheers. hope for, let's hope, hope in 2022 we get back out or I get back out and get to actually get to some beer places. I, I not necessarily get back to what we used to do of doing beer reviews outside pubs and, and beer festivals and stuff like that. So doing that as well as well as everything we've we've started doing in the last year or two. Yeah. So yeah. cheers to everyone basically and happy new year. Mm, coming from John, thanks for entertaining us. It was our pleasure, sort of. Likewise, sir. Indeed. Alright, that is it. Bye bye. Stay safe. That's enough. We're back next week. Um I might be doing a bit of a detox, so I might be breaking out the low A V B V's. We'll see. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, good evening. I just found my headphones. Well, that's great. I hope you have many happy Saturdays listening to them. Bye. Cheers, all. Believe enough to lose control. <laughs>